Tell me what you see when you look at me. Do you see another brother lost in these streets looking for his soul? Trying to find my soul. Or do you see another brother searching for lost souls in these streets? A street soldier. Street soldier. Here to help you get that chip off your shoulder. Warm your colder days and sober your drunken ways. And find a way to help you get over these hurdles placed in our path. And this is not meant to amuse you. This is for all those who have questions but are afraid to ask. I'm so I won't be afraid. I won't be afraid. No. When times get hard, you lose your way. Open your mind and hear what I say. This is a message for the hard and the soft. To those who tune in weekly and to those who keep an eye out for 8 p.m. on Sundays and turn their radios off. The truth hurts. The cloth has been pulled. We're walking around half dead. Use this show as your IV. Alive and free is a new movement. We've achieved self-destruction. A street soldier promotes self-improvement. Streets couldn't be no colder. So I gotta be a soldier. It shouldn't be this hard for me. Even when it seems so hopeless, I gotta keep my focus. I'm glad to be alive and free, yeah. Streets couldn't be no colder. So I gotta be a soldier. It shouldn't be this hard for me. Even when it seems so hopeless, I gotta keep my focus. I'm glad to be alive and free, yeah. This lady is a street soldier. Um, yeah, she's been doing it for a while. Wonderful program you're running and have done it for a while. So we're going to welcome to Street Soldiers, Street Soldier, Heather Starnes. Logwood. 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 Oh, that's right. If you got married. Oh, that's look, right. I, I, look, look. That, that's right. Right. I mean, I mean, you got to say that for uh -huh. him. I know. I know. I mean, I only knew Heather Stark. Hey, I didn't right, know the Logwood right, part. Right. But brother, I ain't going to diss you so like Heather Stark. I know he's listening. Hi. You got to get close to the mic, girl. Oh. You wait. No, no. Anne will be all hello, over hello, you. Hello, hello, hello. How you doing? I'm good. How you We're doing? Good. Yeah, I'll get to him in a minute. I'm sorry oh, with you. Alive and free? Yeah. Uh, that, right. yeah. Wow. Um, you know, I was looking over your, I got your thing here right and uh live in peace and uh, empowering our youth to reclaim i think it says the vision mm -hmm. i couldn't see the rest back at it again and it got all the programs that you do uh this thing has come a come long a long, long way, long right. way right mm -hmm. um you put your you know nose to the grindstone and uh just i'm, I'm just reading this huge successes and you just this is wow mm -hmm. i had a good model well mm -hmm. we'll get to that later but 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 this you, you know you now see a lot of people no, nobody knows you but me so you got to start at the beginning you got to start like who am i where i was born how like you know where to go to high school you got to talk about yourself so start from the beginning christina i know you're listening i'm gonna get to you later all right gotcha. go ahead um my name's heather uh I was I was born in Tennessee, but I don't claim it. No, um, <laughs> the White South is not a. No. Um, I um, it's different. The White South is different than the rest of the South. I'm just gonna call it out. But um, yeah, I have lived um, all over. But I really I got into some trouble when I was 16. And I didn't. Ooh. Can and, you say and, what it was? No. Uh, I was just in the car with some substance. Ah, I understand. And substance. I had to do yes. some uh, community service, uh, uh -huh. and I went to this camp called Camp Maymac, uh. and I didn't know, but it was the only show in town in East Palo Alto back in the day. Um, the City Team Ministries ran a camp, and I had to clean dishes for a week. But I already had a social justice kind of. Well, but you back up. I don't mm. know how you got from Tennessee to East Palo Alto. Oh, I don't either. I don't remember. But does, you don't no. remember? <laughs> I, moved, I lived in Sunnyvale in Texas. But I, when I got in trouble, I went to a camp that served kids from East Palo Alto. Okay. I w and so I did community service, okay. washing dishes, and I already I was bust. Actually, I lived in Texas for a couple of years, and I did um, I was bust into East Austin, and East um, Austin. It was, yeah, and they were bussed out. So that it was like four years of bussing in Austin, Texas, and I was there. Mm. And I knew then, I was like, this is so jacked up, you know? <laughs> I'm like, this does not make sense. How is, you know, these two worlds? And then, you know, we could um, back 
in the 80s in Texas, you could, you know, the white wealthy kids were bust in and they could buy drugs in East Austin and they wouldn't get in trouble and the kids selling it would. And I saw it so clearly. Mm. Um, our vice principal was this African-American woman and a bunch of us, uh, a couple black kids and a couple white kids had gotten into trouble. And um, she told us to go back to class. And I said, hey, man, that's not fair. And my <laughs> best white girl voice, hey, buddy. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and she said, she goes, yeah, life isn't fair for, those, for these kids. Wow. You better just go back to your, um, your class and act wow. like you're white. Wait, she didn't say she that. She did, and she stood there, and she grabbed Wait a the minute. black kids. I she swear. She said that, and she grabbed the black kids, and they got in trouble, and the white kids didn't get in trouble. Wow. But Damn. she was making a point, and that was the turning point for you. That I saw. I was just. I was aware early yeah. on, and um, when I kind of met kids from East Palo Alto, I met Christina at uh, Camp Maymac. Yeah. I met my one of my best friends, Larissa. She was mm -hmm. like three years, you guys know, mm -hmm. Demetra mm -hmm. was there. Yeah. So pretty soon East Palo Alto just became my community. Um, I moved in when I was in, I don't know, 88 or something. Yeah. So um, thought I was going to save the world probably a little bit and got saved myself from the community. Mm -hmm. The community saved me first. So really grateful that I have had this ability to live and be loved by my community. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm still back at that principle. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you go, let me take them. And you I'm, said, you said, you know what, let me tell you. I want to call it sun. It's, it's, it's Sundance. Your Sundance. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Coconut's listening. <coughs> Sundance. It's a good thing you. That was in what? What year you think that was? Probably that was eighty six. It, it's I don't know, real simple. Yeah. Had you I, had, had you been here during the sixties, mm -hmm. you would have marched. Oh yeah, I hope so. Dr. King. I hope so. Oh no, you, yeah. well you would have. If, mm -hmm. if that little if thing I, got yeah, you, right. that thing would have yeah, really got right. you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would have like left Texas, gone mm -hmm. down there, marched. You probably would have been on the mm -hmm. front lines because you know that's the people with with that kind of commitment to social justice did. So yeah. uh, when your turn came for that in you, you you, you, took, you did it in this way. Yeah. Um, wow, that's a that's a. I didn't know that all this time. Mm -hmm. I know you. I didn't know that when I was started. Mm. Yep. Mm, 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 mm. Um, so you get out. You're out. You know, you back out. What? 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 What led you? Just take us on the journey. You know. So. Well, so Christine and I um, moved into a house in East Palo Alto. We worked with uh, City Team Ministries, Camp Maymac. So in the day, back in the day, Camp Maymac was the only game in town. There was no Boys and Girls Club in East Palo Alto. There was no. There wasn't much, and so we would we could get. Uh, about 150 kids. Uh, everybody had to pay $25, you know, so for a week, and they would come up. And I was young, and we probably shouldn't have been running a camp at the time. We were <laughs> a little too young for that much, but uh, you know, we were like, uh, first night we ran it, uh, two kids broke their legs, and <laughs> and I was like, man. Where's the doctor? I didn't know anything. We were way up in Santa Cruz. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, you know, it was it was bad. I was like 20, uh, 22. Uh, and well, so we started working. I mean, I kind of went to college. I went to San Jose State while mm -hmm. I lived in East Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. um, took in kids. We lived in the Young Life House. Christina yeah. and I. You know, and Demetra lived two doors down from us. And um, basically, you, know. you started this house. Yeah. And these, it was like the community family house, house mm -hmm. right? And everybody just came there and. Yeah, had basketball hoops. You did and everything. It. That's right. We just, we lived, and we were growing up too, because yeah, I think right. when we I moved 20 there, I was like right. 20 yeah. or 18. Um, How old were the kids? Well, you know, Larissa's maybe two years younger than me. No, so, I was going to say. I was 17. I was a wise 17 or 18. Though. You know, like, we, we was the blind leading the blind, you know. And, you know, I worked at Chili's in uh, Menlo Park, and the cooks worked, and they lived in East Palo the um and so they sponsored our soccer teams with the steaks and all the food. <laughs> so we always had to hook up, you know, from um, the community. I mean, it was, of course, 
sanctioned by Chili's, but no. uh, you know, we were just, but because we were so young, we were adopted in differently. We weren't living on top of the community. We were yeah. in the community. Well, well the, and let me just say, mm -hmm. you had the desire to do something. Mm -hmm. You knew you wanted to help the young people. You know, you wanted to help yeah. the community. You weren't sure how. No. I know, but you, yeah. but, but you had the desire, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you do that. I mean, when we started, I wasn't sure how, but I know I wanted to do something, mm -hmm. right? And, and you know, it's a lot of it is, you know, figuring out as you go along, That's you know, right. trial and error, hopefully not a lot of error, but, you yeah, know, I'm that, sure that goes with it, right? <laughs> and because you were not much older mm -hmm. than they are, you know, that's that, right. that, that, that's, that's, but I remember going down to that house mm -hmm. and the energy that would be, you know, there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I was like, wow, this is, I mean, I wasn't doing that. You was like, you, you, you know, you was like, it was almost like living with you. <laughs> like, it was. It no, was living with please, you. I think I, I counted one time. There's been like great. 78 <laughs> kids that have lived yes. or adults that have lived. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, well, let, let, she, she couldn't be here, but there's, I, I did not. It was hard to do this program without her, but you know she's. Let's talk about your relationship. Just talk about Christina, because to me that's yeah. Christina's you know, uh, like a sister, and yeah. so we did this together, and yeah. um, you know we were trying and there. I think when like here's some funny stories. You know when the first night we moved into this house, it used to be, used to be a crack house, and so um, it was owned by an organization, but they hadn't been using it. And somebody tried to break in the very first night we were there. And so I'm army, army crawling. We had one little, you know, it was back in the day. We didn't have cell phones. So I'm like crawling to the phone. And I call the, we call the police. And um, it was just, you know, some dude that probably lived there at one point. You know, just, they didn't do anything. They left when the cops pulled up. And we were so excited to show them our house. We were like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You have to look. This is where we're going to have a club. <laughs> and the guys were like, what are you doing here? Uh, the police. And we are like, like, oh man, we're you know we're from Camp Maymac. We did this and that, and uh, we were so excited. But the police were like, "Go home." <laughs> we're, like, well, we're, home. we're so excited. Yeah, yeah. The police were not thrilled. You know, we used to get pulled over all the time because we were white, and when they'd be yeah, like, "Are you right. buying drugs?" I'm like, "No, I'm a Bible club leader. <laughs> I have the rock of Jesus." <laughs> So, yeah, no, we were, you know, we were way out there. We went to a house, and if they're listening, well, you know Mike Mike, so. Yes, uh, yes, It was yes. his family's house, and they were into things, and we dressed up as John the Baptist. We had, like, <laughs> grasshoppers in a baggie, because he, in the Bible, I guess he ate locusts. So we we go past this, like, hot spot <laughs> into this house to have Bible club dressed in togas as John the Baptist, and we were doing a story. I don't know. What. We did a lot of crazy stuff back then. Yeah, you took on, you took on, and, and I guess it, what we should do is really paint. You're trying to help these young people. Uh, talk to people what what was what East Palo Alto was like mm -hmm. when you started this work. What was it like then? What was going on in that two and a half square miles? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can he and can Eugene tell us can from too. His, but, yeah. but just, I mean, I, I, yeah. What from was, my vantage, you know, I always I regret not knowing East Palo Alto better before because now we let we talk about East Palo Alto like it's a person. We love our community and everybody in East Palo Alto. Let you know, we talk about it like, oh, it's East Palo Alto, but. Um, so I kind of came in in the middle of the crack era, yeah, and so exactly. it was, you know, you would see grown, beautiful folks turn into just thin, yellow-eyed folks in, yeah. a, in a matter, and you, you know, it was so hard to catch because you just, in a, in a matter of days, people would just shift, and there were, you know, locks on um, refrigerators, and I mean, everything you think of, it was there, you know, kids were getting torn up and um you know uh, at, literally if you stopped at a stop sign when because partly because i was caucasian perhaps but you know you get five or six hands stuck in your you know so it was a very because uh east palato had been kind of left to its own and, it, yeah. and there had been on the back side there had yeah. been this huge fight to make it a city right. so for 20 years um our community fought to make sure it was a city because it wasn't being policed well by sheriffs and because it's unincorporated so i was coming in kind of on one side and there was this whole group of people that were like activated and fighting um, i was kind of dealing with the kids that were caught 
in the war, you know. Not, un, not unlike so many communities mm -hmm. in the United States at that time, uh, nobody knew what that crack cocaine epidemic was, was going to break. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. I mean, and it's it, it, it's just it's. I remember going back to uh, Camden, New Jersey, at one time, and and they were talking about the rich history of Camden and then what that did to that city just decimated everything uh, but it did it to a lot of places but I'm thinking for a place that's two and a half square miles mm -hmm. right next to you know Palo Alto which is right. just the opposite right mm -hmm. Stanford University all of the, the I mean if, if, and if you go down there it's a city. The it, the railroad tracks are there, but mm -hmm. the railroad tracks aren't there, right? That's I mean, right. it's like yeah, you know, you cross, you, you cross the street, and it's a whole different deal. Um, I think the other thing, and I, I and maybe you can jump in. I, I remember East Palos of having sort of this rich cultural piece. It's totally. The Nairobi. Yep. Uh, the uh, 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 Omar Wally White was That's down right. there doing a lot of that stuff. Oh yeah, and the Black Panthers. Yeah, the were Black there. Panthers there was were a there. Very uh, activated. Yes, active, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I didn't know that as well right. because the way I came in was with this certain group of type of kid that was kind of the one that went to Camp Maymac was kind of the kid that uh, wasn't wasn't involved in that but there was a huge sorry if you went to Camp May Mike and you're involved in that but mm. yeah there was a huge um, really and it still is it's so activated there's people you know you can't we always say just wait for Tuesday because that's City Council everybody shows up if we don't like something every, in fact tomorrow night Monday night is a planning commission and I, there's probably a hundred people gonna be there like so it's a very activated city but it just got caught like well, so every, many these other caught. cities that's and, right you know, you know I mean I always say Malcolm and Mark Martin couldn't have envisioned that's right you know that that coming to undo pretty that's much right. everything right yeah. undo it. and uh going from going to the mountaintop and and, and instead you're going that's to right. funerals and in jail that's right. um how i don't know the year what year did it get the murder capital of the year oh, that is like and, and when they do that folks it's not the number of murders it's the Versus per capita. the population yeah. per capita, I right? I would was, like to see that documented better because I don't know if that was actual, but it, it right. was 92. Yeah. Um, but it yeah. was it was horrific no matter what, you know. Um, and it also, yeah, I think because we're a community that's surrounded by a lot Affluence, of wealth, yeah. that it kind of um, did something for a number of years where kids almost, that was like a bragging right yeah. instead of yeah. what it, should have been for all yeah. of us, you know. We're like, oh, we spelled, you know, murder capital. You know, I'm like, okay, it's 2019, folks. Let's knock that out. You right. know, but there's right. there it be, because it was like we couldn't, the community couldn't or didn't want to, or just the way it was closed out of so much of in the region. Oh yeah, and so that was really. Um, I'm not even sure it was the accurate. wealth did not flow into that city. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just simple. It's it's, it's you you see that right, mm -hmm. and and it's like. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but we didn't, you know, I was, what, all of, when I moved there in 88, I was 18, so I didn't, that was, I'm talking in hindsight, I didn't realize all that. Well, when, when you're doing that, you're mm -hmm. focused, you, you don't think about that, mm -mm. you're focused on saving these young people, mm -hmm. it's that simple, you know they're under siege, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you don't want them to die, you don't want them to go to jail, and uh, you, you got to come up with something, which is, you know, when you started the program, um, and it was originally, it's been a couple of names, so. <laughs> it's been a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was Camp Maymac, it was Young Life, it was Five by yeah. Four Youth by Youth with yeah. Doug Ford. Yeah. It, um, and then Live in Live Peace. In peace. And we yeah. kind of got that peace. from this. But. Yeah. Live in peace. Mm -hmm. Live in peace. Live in peace. Okay. Let's, 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 let's let Eugene talk. We got five minutes. Um, maybe I should finish with her and have Eugene come back. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll start him at the top. I'm going to ask you a couple more things. Um, um, how did you actually, the, the, the journey from, did you incorporate? Did you start a nonprofit? What did you do to move things forward? Because my, 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 uh, my thought about you is that you've just been a worker, a worker. You mm -hmm. just got, you do the work, you do the work, yeah, you do the work. Yeah, we used City Team Camp Maymac for a long time because mm -hmm. we could, we hired everybody. Every, every, a lot of folks were, you know, the, the staff was from East Palo Alto. Then we started leadership development. Um, so we brought up, I think, 15 
high schoolers to live up there all summer and we trained them and um, and then in 97 is when I got your training that's and it more, was well, like, I guess that's unofficially when we first, met, yeah. right? When you came to take the uh, and it was like the training institute. My, I was like, what? What is? <laughs> no, I was seriously like, oh my God, somebody just put words to everything. In 97, it was still, oh, you know, yeah. we were still oh, yeah. in it. And oh, it yeah. was, yeah. I was, you know, drinking from a faucet. It was, uh, it was amazing. Um, and then... We we had a tragedy in our community, a, a fire in in April, uh, killed nine of our family members that we you know really loved and my, our godchildren and so, mm -hmm. I didn't implement um, the stuff I learned because you know we were just traumatized. It was right. so sad. Right. Um, and then I left. I went to Temple and got a, a master's in economic development and urban studies. And um, came back, and oh, we did implement it at camp that summer. We used Alive and Free the first summer. We got it, um, and then I went to Temple, got a master's, came back, and went to Oakland. <laughs> and that's what I called you. I was oh, like, uh, "That's a whole other episode." <laughs> we're gonna need your help. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of that school again? Low Middle Low School. Low Middle School. That's a whole another show. Yeah. <laughs> a lifetime ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just, just I remember when you took the training, and uh, I, you know when you when you find, tr you know trench people. That's like mm -hmm. you know like yourself, who are out there doing the work on the ground floor, and you know who who just take the stuff and ran with it. You ran with it. He said, "Man, I could," you know, and went right back to EPA and 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 put it into put it into. Yeah, I just think just gave it to the young people. Yeah, we break it down. Any we've used oh, it so man. many different ways. It's yeah. it's crazy how yeah. many different yeah. ways we've written it into uh, curriculum yeah. for schools. We've used it for foundations. Yep. We, you know, still use it every Wednesday night, family night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, alive and free radio, street soldiers, hour number two tonight. We are featuring featuring the work. Of Live in Peace, Live in Peace, an extraordinary program in East Palo Alto, which has been around for, well, at least the folks who have been working, maybe I know some different names, have been working in there over 30 years. Uh, program, the programs that they have worked on, Live in Peace is one of them, came to fruition during the middle of the crack, cocaine epidemic in EPA um, and uh, they've just just done remarkable and, and as we go through this one talk some about some of the programs that they've done and the results and if, uh, I mentioned earlier that at one time EPA was uh, had the dubious distinction of being called the murder capital of the United States um, Heather has talked about a lot about how she got there as a very young age began working with the uh, with young people, uh, not much older. Now <laughs> she wasn't much older than them. Uh, talk about how our social justice um, conscious began, and uh, the other. But the, <laughs> she was not alone, and the other person could not be here tonight. But she is joining us via phone, and uh, we got to It's Sundance and Kokanee, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> Sundance is here and Kokanee is on the phone. Christina Thompson. Christina! Hey! Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What up, family? <laughs> what up, girl? What up? What up? It was hard to do this. When I, I didn't know you were at, you're at a wedding, right? I'm at a wedding. Uh, my partner teacher tied the knot. Celebrating that. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. That's why you understood. Uh, but it's hard to do this topic, this show, without you because, you know, it's like it's Butch Cassidy and Sundance. And, you know, it's just a uh, wow. Um, you guys talk to each other. Go ahead. I mean, you, you, you jumped into this with her very early, very young. Um, what was EPA like when you guys started? <laughs> Well, for us, it was like a dream come true, right? We thought we won the lotto. <laughs> and I know I, I heard Sundance say, like, you know, we thought we were going to go save the whole city. And yeah. in reality, 
our world have been rocked. Like, I will never be the same person ever. Yeah. I can't even look at life and people or read or listen to the news the same after my 30 years. Yeah. And after learning just the whole Alive and Free, uh, Alive and Free methodology, like, I can't even watch a movie in peace without thinking about life differently. <laughs> What made you want to do it? Uh, and, and how did you? She said you, the two of you made a camp. What's the name of that camp? Camp Maymac. Maymac. But what, what made you want to do it? Uh, to, to join, f f uh, team up with her to do something about the five young people in that city at that time? Well, you know, I was I was raised in a city team rehabilitation center because my, my dad worked there and. You know, he he was a very significant role model in my life that allowed me just to remember, um, you know, who I was and 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 just to remember that, uh, as you would say, there's nothing more valuable than an ind individual's life, and that's every life, no matter race or or religion or just even in their plight of life, in their mental health state, and I. That, that rocked my world, and as I began to get an education as a teacher, I saw the disparities and the, the equity was just, just um, so transformational in my mind because it was so uniquely different. It was not equal at all. And, um, you know, we had Big Ray who used to come over our house, and he was – a junior or senior in high school and he was graduating but couldn't read and we began just to read the comics with him and that's how we taught him how to read and mm. and i just thought whoa this is this is uh, this is not right i just don't even know how to put that in words as a reading teacher today at east palo alto charter school i'm i'm back there because education is a strong foundation and if we're going to send kids to to college, they better know how to read, right? <laughs> yeah. What, what What did you think when you met Heather? <laughs> well, you know, At let her tell it. She was there because she was in trouble. <laughs> Please, we had guest jeans on, and that's why we became friends. <laughs> he just thought we were probably cute for this work, first of all. But let me tell you, I... You know, you don't want to do this work alone. At, right. In, in yeah. the in the places that we've been and the things we've seen, um, and you know, we've been to able to travel a lot of phenomenal places around the world uh, with some of our young people and adults. Like, you don't want to do this work alone. You can't. Like this work, you know, relationally speaking, this work cannot be done alone. You have to have. Uh, friends that hold you up when you're down and you hold them up when they're down and and that's what a strong community is so and that's what we want to model uh healthy friendships and uh, it hasn't been easy i think this work has taken a toll um as we've gotten older especially since we grew up yeah uh in it i, I think we um we saw so much we didn't know what to do with it and it uh it just kind of again, we had to, we constantly have to step back and re-engage a lot in it. But um, again, our friendships that we've made and our godchildren and the our neighbors, I mean, like we have what people want: some phenomenal relationships in our community. So I, I can only be grateful for that. Uh, I understand the, the part you said is you don't want to do it alone. Uh, I remember Jack and I hooked up, my co-founder. Uh, I'm black, Jack's white, um, and the thing that we think we had in common was that we love kids. Uh, and but you guys are both white, <laughs> and so you're going yeah, out there. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you're going out there and working with the kid. What was the reception? I'm just wondering. Were they like they don't care? I mean, you know, they love y'all. What did, 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 bumps in the road? Uh, anything like that? <laughs> uh, Do you have to convince them? Uh, what? All the above. All the above, <laughs> Dr. Marshall. All the above. Oh, yeah. Name it. We've we've heard it. We've we've felt it. We've just discovered it. Yeah, I mean, there was some issues. We're, we were known as the church ladies, and then now we're known as the peach ladies, and <laughs> now we're just known as, oh, those those girls, you know? <laughs> yeah, and that, 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 that you know, that, that they knew you wanted to help them, period. Mm -hmm. That comes through. That comes through with anything. 
Uh, and and but it was also humbling, you know. Yeah. We we would we had Bible cl- we had yeah, Bible club over at somebody's house, and you know the mom gram- we call her mom. She's passed since, but um, yeah. she would feed us first, you know. And and then as we were coming at the same time, we were really starting to understand historical racism right. and systemic racism. Yeah. And here, this woman is from the Jim Crow South, right. you know. And I'm sitting at her table, and I'm, yeah. and she's feeding us like we're you know they she is why we stayed probably because mm. she she made it she made it clear that we were not to be bothered and um you know and here we were and at the same time we're i'm just we're learning all this you know white people have to learn late okay but we <laughs> you know we're learning we're starting to understand this and you know you couldn't tell her nothing about her two white granddaughters oh, you know? and but that's very humbling mm-hmm. you know that was that was a yeah. tough pill to swallow. I, I know that Jack and I, even as we were going to do this, and it, we had to go to funerals, and we had to visit yeah. kids in jail, yeah. and you know, it was yeah. just it was happening faster. It, yeah. it was like we were trying to save everybody, but they were drowning mm-hmm. everywhere. You yeah. know, we really didn't know what we were into, and and it, we used to have yeah. all these conversations. Mm-hmm. He and I, we got to so. That takes a toll on yeah. him, especially then, because it was, yeah. and, and we didn't find out until later that a lot of this was sanctioned and orchestrated by, you know, the powers that be, right. right? We didn't know that. You know, we didn't know that this was a, a setup for no. all these young people we were working with. How did you guys, I mean, you know, it was bad, but we didn't get the murder capital of the world. How did, how did you just deal with that? Well, let's Christina. clarify. How'd you do that? Out to us. Was also really beautiful. At oh yeah, no, of course. So right. I want to right. Yeah. Yes, yes. I know, but, but that's yeah. not the reason you were in the yeah. business. No. You were a business guy. How did? But how did you personally deal with the, all that tough stuff? Well, Christine, but I, we had good mentors. We had great people pouring into us. Manny Ortiz, uh, Tom Skinner, Roy Thompson, Christina's dad, um, that really were. Um, you know, really spoke into us, and we had a faith too. You know, we. I mean, at one point, you kind of have to go. I hope. I hope the stuff that I believe is real because we're losing so many kids. Yeah. You know, it was. It was deep. It was yeah. really painful. Yeah. You know, and, and that's why the fact that you stayed in. Cause see, a lot of I, I, we have, a lot of people have been in our training. Mm-hmm. And you know, they took the training and they went on to be corporate America, which mm-hmm. is they can do what you want to do. But you've never, it's been your life's mission to work with this, despite all of that pain and tragedy, which is what I really admire both of you for. Um, is Christina, are you still there? Are you still there? You still there? I'm still here. You're still there. I'm here. Um, <laughs> Uh, we got a lot of folks, a couple of folks who want to call. We, well, you can hear, so we're going to put you on hold, okay? Yep. And we're going to... Okay, love y'all. Th- okay, okay. I'm going to put you on hold. Um, let me, just, I want to get Eugene, but I want to... We got... Okay. Well, while I got calls, we're going we're gonna to get him. Let's go to... I think let's go line three. And this is... Is this Larissa? Hello. How you doing? How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? You're on with uh, what up, I'm I'm long time no see. Y'all talked about my city. Of course, I had to call in. Well, then you can talk about your city and and these two wonderful people that we have here. And, and we're gonna get uh, this. Go ahead. What do you want to say? The, just just Heather, right. Christina. So let's just say. I mean, because I hear about all of the stuff that I went through in the '92 and going at all those funerals and. You know, I think about them and pray to you know for them every day. But you guys are forgetting the beauty of East Palo Alto. Right, right, you know what I'm saying? I right. mean, just across everywhere, we might be a small and 2.2 square miles, but those girls were set were were, were brought here to this 2.2 mile city for a reason. Yeah. You know, and, and they took they took street soldiers and they. They uh, spread it everywhere, and people loved them, but there was a reason why it was East Palo Alto. And when they are still saying all these years later um, that they still love it as much as they do, I mean, despite whatever happened, and there was a lot of tragedy in it, and there was a lot of love in it, and there was a lot of everything. They got godchildren they didn't ask for. Um, we got three from Lisa. They got godchildren living with them they didn't ask for. And And they still love it, and they still honor it and they still do whatever they can for the community that says a lot 
And that says a lot. And I don't think um, that they get credit enough. And I don't think that they want the credit, actually, to tell you the truth for what they do. But they were put into a beautiful situation despite um, the adversities that um, East Palo Alto has. It's a beautiful place to be, and it's a beautiful place to uh, grow up and and nurture one's uh, love for someone else or for whatever's going on. And, and you might add, we might add, Mr. the way you, just, just hearing you talk about East Palo Alto, that you fought for your city. You fought for it. And I don't mean fight, fight. You fought to make it what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And and that's what you know the, the the and that's trench work. That's mm-hmm. that's that's being in and out doing it and taking a stand and saying no, this is not over. It's not going to take away the beauty of what we have here. And that's why yeah, she said it so well. Mm-hmm. I just 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 you must. What do you think of her? That's well, saying Larissa, that. that's my girl. That's I we're know. family. Larissa's I know, family. I know that. But that's the thing. We well, were family. Given that's it. So much. That's the right word. Family uh, through this, and so, you know, and I, while we were in this trench, there was another trench. There was a group called um, that were fighting against Romic, the in, um, environmental. Right. Um, can't even think of their name right now. Who is that? Yuka. Sorry, my bad. Uh, there, so there was, the, you know, there was multiple trenches, and that was the thing. Uh, East Palo Alto was so layered yeah. that we had one trench. There was another trench happening. Um, there were people fighting to become a city at the same time. And, you know, once we became a city, they the surrounding communities grabbed all our land, took our tax yep. base. Yep. Um, so we were just part of that group, you know. Um, and, you know, Larissa fights, you know, she's... she's uh, Amazing. Uh, she first of all, she has three of my godchildren, and all three. One's a graduate. Uh, no, one's going to graduate in May. They all go, th- and then her son is a sophomore. So out of her three kids, they're all going to be college grads. Wow. Yes. Congratulations. That's wonderful. You hear the word thank family. Thank you. Thank you. But it's, family. it's just but that's family. community. That's what I'm saying. This yeah. is it's community. Yeah. It's yeah. the love of the family. It's yeah. the love of doing whatever needs to be done yeah. to get to get our next generation where they need to be. Yeah. Productive citizens yeah. who are giving back to the community because that's what it's all about. If you're raising somebody that doesn't want to give back positively and want to bring the next generation up then, yeah, you're not doing your job. You need to reevaluate what you're doing with your t- children. But if you're raising people who want to give back, who love other people, and who want to just keep get, sending a hand down to pick somebody up, you're doing what you need to be doing. And that's what I think I want East Palo Alto to be known as. People who are, you know what I'm saying, yeah, we have we got our rough edges, but we love each other and we want to, you know, see each other, you know, make it no matter what. Thank you, Louis. But all this justification going on right there, that's well, a whole other we, subject right there. But we'll, now, we'll, on this, we'll, on this, we'll on this team, that, 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 nobody has their interest in really taking street soldiers and took it to another level. You got it. Thank you, hon. Thank you for the call. We're going to get a couple more in here. Uh, let's go to line. Is that line two? Is that Marco? Marco? No, oh, wow. Marco, that's, you're that's on godson. with Heather. Hello, hello. Christina. Go ahead. You're on. What do you want to say? How you doing, everybody? It's it's good to hear. Um, And it's just, it's amazing to hear some of these testimonies going on. Um, And, I mean, uh, Dr. Marshall, is it? Is that that your name? Am I I saying that right? Yep, that's me. (laughs) Yeah, I want to ask, where are you from, Dr. Marshall? Originally? Born in St. Louis, yeah. raised in Los Angeles, California, mm-hmm. better known as South Central. So does, does, do you lose any of that when you, whenever you go anywhere else, now that you're in the Bay Area? Did I lose it? Um, yeah, do you lose it? Do you, like, does, yes. does any of that flair come out when you speak with anybody? Does any of the values that, that, that you were, were raised with, does that, do you lose any of that when you speak with anybody? The values I have... No, I pretty mm-hmm. much just no. I don't think so. I'm, I'm trying to see what 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 you mean when you say the values. So, for that example, I, I guess like what I'm what I'm trying to like um, point out here. I think you know the work that not only uh, Heather and and Kokanee and and all these folks you know that we were been talking about. Mm-hmm. It's just been really really community oriented, and mm-hmm. I think that's what the key word is. Um, currently, I I graduated maybe about a year and a half ago now, and you know, I, I can I can honestly, gracefully say that a big chunk of why that even happened was because of Heather. Mm-hmm. And some of it is, um, 
I think the greatest focus was that they were community oriented. They were consistent, right? The, the greatest things about relationship building um, behind it and, and making the key is, is three things. It's consistency, mm. it's commitment, mm. and it's communication. Mm. And I think um, Heather had that down the whole way. Um, you know, they mentioned that that they were seen as these church ladies at first and then these, these peace ladies, and then now that they're just known, right? Um, and that's a testimony that they, they stayed consistent with the work that they did. Yes. They not only showed up with the work, but they came home to, to, to my mom's cooking. They checked up on my grades when I was failing. They, they, they gave me real talks about the, the system itself and, and, and where I was placed and what I needed to do to basically succeed. No sugarcoating around it. And I think that has been ingrained in myself since. So I think to say that it's limited to the capacity of just East Palo Alto, mm-hmm. I think it's so much bigger than that. And, you know, hearing you and your excitement and when you speak, I think that, that that's a testimony of, of some of the, the values and, and the community that you were built, not only in St. Louis, but in Los Angeles, right? And that, that those commitments and those values continue to transfer wherever you go, you know, um, just to give you a little bit of my background, um, I got incarcerated as a youth, maybe about 16 years old, mm. and I had already built in a relationship um, with Heather, talking about these uh, uh, street codes and things to kind of live by in, in regards to fearships and friendships and, and kind of, you know, uh, getting more context to, to navigating through, through the culture of gang violence and just drugs within the community that was plaguing us. And unfortunately, um, nobody is, is really um, immune to that. Regardless, I'm, I'm still living there, and, and I still got to, you know, go to school, and I still am exposed to it. So I think what really helped me get out of that and, and see it further was the unconditional love that I received even after I got incarcerated. Yeah. There was no shame that was placed on me. Like the unconditional love that Language, I received brother. was more than enough to, to, for me to be able to continue on. Sorry. And I think... That itself has allowed me to project that, you know, and I'm so grateful for that. There's so many people that have allowed the capability to be able to touch and say, wow, how do you do that? Or why? I don't understand how I can feel this way. And I say, you know what? It's the grace of God that I was been able to be able to receive that myself. And it's not only building community in East Palo Alto, but be, being able to build community within oneself to reach a higher power, to reach a connection, to reach community for those that, that, that need it. You know, and, and we can't do this ourselves. And so, you know, I think exposure is a great thing. Um, you know, I think a, a piece of privilege is not only trying to just attack it and say it's unfair, but finding out where, where you fit in that, right? Heather has not only seen her privilege, but she's also been working it to, to be able to assess and, and, and only build off of what, what she's already has like in terms of reprogramming, in terms of, in terms of funding, right? And so that is taught to us not as a way of, of trying to revolt. The, 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 their testimony is, it says it all. The fact that, you know, going to jail, she stuck with you all the way through, unconditional love, it, it, it says it all about her. And, and, and your work, <laughs> the work you're doing today is perfect. Okay, we continue our spirited <laughs> and wonderful acknowledgement of the work of Living Peace of uh, Heather Starnes and Christina Thompson all those years in the city of East Palo Alto, better known as EPA. And a gentleman has been patiently waiting through this whole conversation. I got to give him a chance to jump on the air. Welcome to Street Soldiers, Mr. Eugene. Jackson. Hi, Eugene. How are you? How you doing? How you doing, Dr. Marshall? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? And and Ann's about to, let's say, get into the mic. Get into the mic. Just listen to everything. Just what have you thought? Just say what you want to say. Just just your feelings, your thoughts, the whole this, the work of living peace, and how you met her. And But you got to get close to that mic. You got to get way close. I mean, the work of living peace is, I mean, like, like I said, we used to glorify. Like, when I grew up, we... Our our funerals were like our picnics. I mean, that's yeah. where we was gonna go. We we're gonna yeah. everybody's gonna get seen, seen you in a long time. We gonna go eat afterward. We are gonna go fellowship with one another, and then we back out doing us again. 
And so then when the concept of living peace come, now we're going to go over there. We're going to start celebrating you when you're here. Yeah. We're going to keep trying to make you feel loved and start putting it together. And that was the strength of it. So then when everybody started to get into that and you started to pull everybody like, because we're so communal, it brought everybody together. It made people want to follow together. So like I said, I came from the opposite side of Heather. Heather came in to help the city. I was part of that, the ignorance in the city at the time. You were so, part of the problem, not part, part of the, the solution. Exactly. Right, yeah. You know, so, and then, like I said, for a long time, we knew Heather was, but Heather was in the Ville. And I was from the mids. We were complete, like, mortal enemies. So the cat she was trying to save, we had problems. That was your image, right, 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 right. So when Heather would come say something to us, yeah. And so when Heather come through, we'd look at her like, come on now. (laughs) You snitching for the other side. (laughs) And we looked at her like that. Are you just trying to get... I ain't no snitch. (laughs) And so then then as we started to get in, we had to start waking up. So it it took a couple of police officers we dealt with. And a few of our old elders within the community said, why are we knocking each other off? Why are we attacking each other? We're genocide. We're doing somebody else's work. And as you start to pay attention, to that you started like okay whatever what I'm trying to get my money I'm trying to do me and then you'd watch it to hit your family get a little closer to home and then you you sit home and you'd resonate on that and you digest it and you go like whoa okay this is heavy so then you had to start thinking about it. so then you start trying to clip your family then you start finding out I can't clean up my family without cleaning my community so then you want to start reaching out to your community and then you start to find out within your community there's so many silos so there's so many people actually trying to help but they're so siloed out that nobody's coming together. Yeah. And so that made it even harder because now you're the enemy, even though you're doing right on the other side, because yep. you be taken away from something we need or vice versa. You're getting press when we want the press. And it, and it, it became, it became this like, like an octopus pulling us down and we had to start waking up in a new time and age. And like I said, and I think that's where the networking and living peace said, okay, we got to touch so many different areas and we got to hold so many different hands. So we don't want to reinvent the wheels. We gonna find where the strengths are. So like every time you see, when we hire somebody in, Mm -hmm. We automatically bring around the street soldiers. Mm-hmm. Can mm-hmm. we teach it? Yeah, but if you get it from the root, it's going to be sweet. We can give you a piece of it, but let's go take it where it's come from. Let's get the passion. And then when we bring it back now, they're running with that same amount of energy. And then they're digesting a little bit different and putting it back out the way it needs to be. I, I want to go back to when uh, one of my boys, <laughs> love him, when I first met him and he, he, later on, when you start when positivity meets negativity, when peace meets war, <laughs> when, you know, when, when this mindset, this street mindset meets something that says, no, uh, I remember what he said was says, man, when I first heard, heard, Doc, when I first heard y'all, you and, and Jack and, you know, and, and the club, you know, you're talking that peace stuff, it sounded like wah, 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 wah. I remember Derek always said that. So, here she comes saying something completely different. You know, her, her and Christina live in peace. And that's a whole different mindset, right? And it, it, I, 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 I've done this. I mean, I've been down there with the Crips and the Bloods, you know, and like you did, I deal with everybody, right? I don't care who you are. But then they see you with a Crip and you'd be like, why you with a Blood? So, like, that must have been like, how long did it take for that? To like begin to think, because she's really opening up you to something that you like. Because when you're in the streets, you for the streets. Period. That's it. I, Live it, and die. <laughs> it took a long time. Yeah. I, mean, I remember. I remember when you came down to the police station in East Palo Alto. It's the first time I took your class. Yeah. And you started talking about how all these things that we're we're studying, like the commandments of violence. Yeah. And when I was reading them, I was like, whoa, okay, I'm up here trying to help these cats, but (laughs) I'm still kind of stuck in some of them. And I found, and and when you talked about that, it was like, it was heavy because we have biases, whether we want to or not. So I can come in and because this dude did something to one of my folks, I'm still kind of holding that. You know, I felt pain. I, I took that with me. We hold so much PTSD in our community that's not treated that we, we, we lash back out. And like I said, and it took a long time, and yeah. I found myself like, Heather said, okay, Gene, we're going to go here and work with these. And I said, well, I'm from the mid, and I got <laughs> mid cats thinking that I'm switching sides. And she said, but you, ain't, you don't have a side. Right. And I had to keep telling myself. Yes. And, and yeah. then I would have homeboys get at me like, dude, how come you're not doing stuff over here? I said, because all we can afford is this building right here, but I'll come over that way. <laughs> you know, and it's... 
and it, it took a long time, and it took a lot of just like soul searching, reaching out, going to pick people up, grabbing vans. Okay, we're going to grab you, going to meet you where you are. We're going to get you where you need to be. Are we going to be at the schools? Are we going to be at the practices? You know, what do we need to do so we start getting those relationals to start to come together? And that was the hard part. And, and, and I always says nothing better than a converted person. <laughs> it's like, you know, Malcolm X went from the Satan in prison to the great Malcolm X because... You know, when you, when, you, when you get converted and you really, like, have seen the light, I mean, or, or what they say in the Bible, is Saul the Paul, right? right. Saul, the, the biggest whatever, and then he became Paul, and he, he, it's almost evangelical. Yeah. And so then you just out there and working with, just doing the work and saving people. What a wonderful feeling. Uh, I remember reading this brother in San Quentin. He said, I want to make up for all the damage that I've done. Mm -hmm. And he really meant that, you know? So... You have been you've been doing this just thank you man thank you thank you for everything you do really it's it's I mean the, the smile and what what the what you must feel now it's got to be a lot better when you felt when you was out there on the ground oh it, 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 it it's crazy because you talk about power yeah and we grew up with power so when we pulled up in a neighborhood and everybody scat yeah. That made us feel good. We walked into a party and everybody's going to leave or everybody started looking like they know it's about to shut down. That made us feel powerful. Now when you send somebody to college, when you graduated from somebody from high school, when you stop in wars, it makes you that that's even more powerful. One, we but all we had was that. That's why you hear our kids still to this day that weren't even born in the murder capital at that time still talk about it because that's the only little bit of power they hold into. They're losing their communities. Mm -hmm. They're losing that every day. Their education is where it's supposed to be. Families are falling apart. So they're holding on to something that makes them feel like they're something. And doing this type of work makes you say, okay, I can give you a different sense of power. And I can give you a sense of believing. And one of the things we all talk about is if we can make them see themselves somewhere, then they can then they can achieve it. But if they can't see it, they can't achieve it. And that's the the biggest piece. And like one of the lines that we got from you that we use almost every day is what our kids, all you do is turn right and stay straight. Oh. Yeah. And that's like and one of our strongest right sayings. Yep. Because we don't care where yep. you messed up, let's turn right and just stay straight that's from right. this point. And that's we tell right. them that every day, every day. Let's just keep it going. And before you know it, you're a little bit further and a little bit further and yeah. you're where you want to be. I, I'm going to give you a couple of words of the, 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 the power. We, we keep power. But I'm going to say the, the, the first power, the other power, was based on fear. That's right. This power is joy. <laughs> it's a big difference. It's a big difference. And, and joy it has a different kind of freedom. Uh, that fear had no freedom. <laughs> and and just I, I just got to say thank you, man. I do. I do. Every time I go into the joint, I tell, man, you know, I love going there because there's a Malcolm X in here. You know? Um, Marco, just listen to Marco. And you said Marco wasn't a great when it, he could have had a life bid, but now he's he, he ended up graduating from Humboldt State, right? You know, and and uh, uh, he's not a statistic, he's not that kind of statistic. He's this kind of statistic that you know, I'm looking at this. Just how many college graduates do you have now? Just you got, you know, just how I many think you we got? have 60? Yes, or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have seventy three in college. Seventy three in college. We're gonna graduate sixteen. Sixteen, right? This year. Yeah, that's you Stan get... Logwood. That's him. He does all that. You got your own scholarship fund now. Mm -hmm. uh, you got all kind of programs. You got programs I would even think of doing, girl. You you come up with ideas. That... We can't. I know. <laughs> you yeah. got stuff. That... Everybody's like, okay, thank you. You got you know. We got a bike just... shop. Here we have a bike, bike shop. Gym. You got. We have. Yeah, yeah. it's joy. It is. Joy. There's a lot of joy. That's what we wanted. But it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. She's got to sum up all the joy right here, as she always does so well. Here comes Lady Estelle. The topic tonight salutes a town in the bay and the work they've done to keep drama away. East Palo Alto, known as the murder capital in 92, has since empowered and reclaimed a bunch of youth. Two and a half square miles, unincorporated yet beloved, rich in culture, strong in community, and activated as well. Excluded from the wealth that surrounds it, but empowered and prosperous from the love for it while in it. Heather and Christina, two white girls in it, from Camp Maymac to Omega, they took the training and ran with it. Humbled, open, accepted, questioned, 
and transformed. Known as Sundance and Kokanee, with love and determination, they weathered the storm. Consistency, communication, and commitment was key. They showed up, checked up, and supported the whole community. With unconditional love and making no excuses, persistent, relentless, church ladies and peacekeepers, communal, relational, Clarity came with a different sense of power, watching kids go to college and then graduate. The strength and courage to be present and stand through the joy and the pain, and they do it with love. So Street Soldiers wants the nation to see the beauty and community of East Palo Alto. And please, stay alive and free. This is Lady Estelle asking you to consider this. Ah. Um, you got two minutes to give more shout outs. You can do it. You got you got a little time in the tank. Eugene, you wanna holler at anybody? You can do so. I got we I say we gotta holler at Mr. Mitra. Gotta holler at Mr. Mitra. Yes. Uh you gave her to us and Laura, we haven't been the same since. Yeah. Um in a good way. Um no, just I don't know. Just she says it all, you see the work says it all. Yeah, I mean we're on just a new fight. I mean our fight is now like really about gentrification yeah. and housing and yeah. making sure that uh, our community and, and other communities of color are don't just disappear right. and uh, really kind of some of the strengths. So that's it's kind of what we're forcing that's what we're fighting for next and education we're in a fight for um, our kids in high school to graduate and get into college. Well, we know one thing, wherever the fight is, you're going to be there. Because yeah. what people always tell me and Jack, are you still doing this? <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> that's what you do. That's what Eugene does. Also, Thank just you. shout out your fighting. Just say a little bit about the, the guys that are fighting. No. Oh, so, like I said, we, we created programs yeah. that we said we keep. So when we keep grabbing youth, we have to find out the things they want. So we have the Absolutely. boxing and the MMA. And so we have a, a Then we team got the muscles. I've been trying to give you something <laughs> like that. Okay. <laughs> so we have a whole team of kids that we brought jiu-jitsu to these Palo Alto. So we brought Brazilians in from Brazil. And our kids are dominating all these teams. So mm. we, just, we just won like six first places last Ooh. week, about two second places. One of our fighters just won in a big event in Bellator. So wow. We got a bunch of guys boxing. I mean, we just, it just it's become very, very creative. Yeah, that's one. All of that beats being in the streets. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're out of here, everybody. We're out of here, everybody. We'll see you next week. We got another great one for you. But the main thing you got to do is it's real simple. Stay alive and free. Tell me what you see when you look at me. Do you see another brother lost in these streets looking for his soul? Trying to find my soul. Or do you see another brother searching for lost souls in these streets? A street soldier. Street soldier. Here to help you get that chip off your shoulder. Warm your colder days and sober your drunken ways. And find a way to help you get over these hurdles placed in our path. And this is not meant to amuse you. This is for all those who have questions but are afraid to ask. I'm so I won't be afraid. I won't be afraid. No. When times get hard, you lose your way. Open your mind. And hear what I say. This is a message for the hard and the soft. To those who tune in weekly and to those who keep an eye out for 8 p.m. on Sundays and turn their radios off. The truth hurts. The cloth has been pulled. We're walking around half dead. Use this show as your IV. Alive and free is a new movement. We've achieved self-destruction. A street soldier promotes self-improvement. Streets couldn't be no colder. So I gotta be a soldier. It shouldn't be this hard for me. Even when it seems so hopeless, I gotta keep my focus. I'm glad to be alive and free, yeah. Streets couldn't be no colder. So I gotta be a soldier. It shouldn't be this hard for me. Even when it seems so hopeless, I gotta keep my focus. I'm glad to be alive and free.